Let's go on to this um, next series of questions. Conifers have been around for about 300 million years. Hopefully you saw these questions in the handout that corresponds to these slideshows. And um, uh, the video goes on to talk about how flowering plants have taken up the best real estate um, on terrestrial habitats and that conifers really only dominate in those places where flowering plants can't thrive. And some of those habitats are places where it's very cold or it's very dry. Cold, dry, um, or poor soil conditions. So as a rule of thumb, that's where you tend to see the conifers, <clears throat> but of course there are always exceptions. Uh, when um, you look close, more closely at a pollen grain uh, um, under a microscope, they can, especially if it's from a pine tree, they can look kind of like little um, Mickey Mouse faces, right? So, um, but let's actually highlight what is not Mickey Mouse. It is a pollen grain. And these two black dots, um, often there's actually three of them, um, but these black dots are the actual sperm. And then the pollen grains often have these sort of wing-like structures, not wings that flap, but wings maybe more like sails. Maybe we should not say wings, we should say sails that catch the wind and help the pollen to travel to a female cone. So pollen, remember, needs to travel to a female cone. And so here's one of those early green stages of a female pine cone, and here's where that seed is being developed inside these bracts. So this is a cross section of a pine cone, a female pine cone. And then we've got the seed. Again, we talked about how the coat protects the embryo inside from drying out. And that also these little sails help the seeds to disperse. Sails help seeds disperse. Which is important because plants cannot just pick up and walk somewhere else. They've got to have their offspring um, spread out a little bit. Here's a conifer life cycle, but I'm not going to ask you to focus on this very much. I just want you to have an uh, image so that you can look at how this works. So the egg is inside the female cone that's bigger. Um, the sperm in, in these little cases called pollen travels to the egg, fertilizes the egg, and makes an embryo inside a seed. An embryo embryo would be inside the seed and then this uh, um, the seed then gets dropped by the pine cone and develops into a young seedling which then grows into the adult which will produce male cones and female cones and so that's basically um, the cycle next up are the flowering plants one branch of seed plants started developing flowers and fruits sometime between 250 and 150 million years ago those were the angiosperms and their um, uh, main thing is um, flowers, showy flowers attract pollinators. So the main thing to remember, you know, what is it that makes flowers so beautiful is that they are trying to attract pollinators um, to, to help spread their pollen to the another flower of the same species and reproduce. And then the next video um, talks about a particular um, flower arrangement with their pollinators where the flowers only release their pollen um, when there's a sort of a, a, a vibration that the bumblebee produces. So check out this video. Here are the questions to be looking for. Why would some flowers want to be very specific? Which pollinators they attract? What is the advantage <laughs> of using pollinators instead of having your pollen be windblown? And I don't think the video answers this, so you're going to have to think about that. And then what are three plants that use this buzz pollination that we talked about? So check out this video. We'll stop this here and we'll see you back again after you've watched that video.